Okay, thank you everybody for coming. Um, this is a presentation on factoring in COVID consideration and accessibility. Today, a um, brief agenda, um, direct access, which is myself and Steve, will talk for 20 minutes and then we will have Mitchell from Medium Development Officer from West Midland Medium Development Programme to talk about the impact of COVID on disability visitor engagement. And then we will have a question section. Very briefly, just talk about myself. Um, in direct access, I founded in 2004. Um, I have been the access consultant for many World Heritage sites, such as Bath, the Palaces of Westminster, um, I've worked on refurbishment programmes with the Harris and Blackpool Winter Garden. Uh, I'm very proudly working at the moment with the West Midland Medium Development Programme. Hello, my name is Steve. I joined Direct Access in 2017. My background is actually in health and safety. I did my master's in um, occupational health and safety, which is useful when it comes to looking at accessibility. I've worked on the creation of programming for Expo 2020 for two years in Dubai, uh, which was designed to the ADA standard. I'm part of the IAAP examination body for new and dot com and access consultant. The aim of today, uh, by the end of this session, hopefully you have a greater understanding of access audit, what their purpose is, and Stephen will explain some examples. The implications of COVID and accessibility consideration, and then Michelle will talk about the impact of COVID on disability engagement. So there's quite a lot to cover. Uh, to shorten that as much as we can. Um, at the beginning of every presentation, it's important just to highlight the, uh, Michelle will know this slide really well, um, who benefits from inclusive museum? It includes people with a physical impairment, visual impairment, hearing impairment, um, diversity issues, Family, family benefit from inclusivity. Elderly people, people um, who have temporary injury, football, pregnant mothers, people who are fatigued and tired. When you take into account this whole range of people, that is a significant number of people. So museums need to consider their accessibility across the whole spectrum of disability, not just those with a mobility impairment. I think it's important to recap and show that. Steve? Accessibility um, audit, um, what they do is that they look at established buildings and services to make recommendations on accessibility. Once you've done an audit, they will result in an ongoing action plan to achieve facilities that will be inclusive for all which is new seats for you, retrofitting and providing services in alternative ways. So uh, what is audited as part of an audit? The physical aspect of a building or environment, so that could be the step from uh, different rooms, what there might be news for. The news of the building, including any alternative provision for access to premises and services, mm -hmm. and any building management mm -hmm. issues. So Stephen will give you a quick overview of some examples that we picked up over the years. Yeah, I think, to be honest, I think pictures tell a thousand words. So let me just run through a few pictures of things that we picked up on some access order. I am conscious of time, so I'm just going to go through there. We look at the approach route and street furniture. How easy is it to find your museum? Do you have tactile paving on approach? Car parking, um, do you have accessible parking spaces nearby? If they are, are they well marked out? Are they regular, regularly up kept? Do you have signage? Ramp, when you have ramp, the handrail, if they are of exposed metal, they're quite cold to touch. Um, 
if you have stabbed? Do you have color contrast at the edge of them? If you see here, these steps are actually quite difficult to see. Again, this is a good example of where if you don't have color contrast at the edge of the step, it's difficult to find them. Entrances, are they easy to find? Um, so from the sinus to your site, when you arrive there, can you find the entrance easily? If you have an entrance which is fully glazed, do you have markings on the glass? To, um, because if you don't see that there's glass, it could be a collision hazard. Is the entrance well contrasted? For an example, the middle one is white on a white background where you have a reception area, gift shop, and the reception should have a split height counter. You should consider an induction loop for people with a hearing impairment, like myself. Mm -hmm. And Steve, now I'm going to cover a bit about reception areas when we talk about COVID. Internal doors, as you see, the one on the left is white on a white background. The middle one is fully glazed with no markings on the glass. The doors, how heavy are they to open? Corridors and surfaces we also cover in an accessibility order. If you've got columns, are they easy to see? Where you've got wooden flooring, which a lot of galleries and uh, museums will have wooden flooring. Are they cleaned in a way where you will have a matte finish or a very shiny finish. If it's a shiny finish, somebody with impaired vision could assume that it's a wet surface. I have to show you there. This, this um, is when I was working in Poland. This is actually a route towards a museum. Now, as you can see here, the, the surface of could cause tremendous problems for a range of people. If you have impaired vision, it could look like a flight of step. Uh, if epilepsy, the, the shape, if, uh, there's so many things that are wrong with that. Internal step. If you have open riding, are you aware that it's not just a tripping hazard, but it can actually stop, um, it can make assistant animal dog, um, that somebody blind who's got a guide dog, apprehensive to proceed. The middle photo, handrail, are they colour contrasted against the background which they are seeing? Lift, platform lift, do the buttons have tactile braille? Is there audio for people with impaired vision? If you are um, a historical site um, and you don't have access to the first floor, are you considering how you provide alternative means of access? The toilet facilities we look at, you've got um, here in these photos, white sanitary wear against the white background. Very difficult to see. Um, your disabled toilet. Uh, management issue where you have a disabled toilet, are you keeping the transfer area free? Are the grab rails contracted? The cord alarm, are they kept loose or are they being tied up? In um, your museum, your site, you have interactive items, so um, they have games, things that can be touched. Are these accessible for all? Are these on a height adjustable the table for wheelchair use? I will come shortly on um, them being touched because I think we're in a bit of a grey area at the moment. Again, do you provide large print tack for display? Do you have tactile and braille? Lighting. Lighting is absolutely critical um, in terms of ensuring that your artifacts, your paintings are well illuminated, but also in terms of making sure there's no glare and there's no 
uneven patches of because you have training room, training area, class, schools quite often come. Do you have an induction loop for somebody with a hearing impairment? What are your fire evacuation procedures? Do you have visual strobe lights for somebody with a hearing impairment? Quite often at museum um, site, you may have volunteers. They may be elderly and they may have poor hearing. Management. Steve? Uh, thank you, Dave. Um, Stephen had covered some of the dorm power that you would find in an access order. From the access order, you would have an action plan and need to think about how it's implemented. The action plan has to keep focused on what we want to achieve. Quick wins should be immediately implemented. Stephen mentioned the pull cord in the tool. That, that is something very quick. Just untie them immediately that the result. Longer term items should be considered as part of future refurbishment. Then at the same time, there are many items which might not be the responsibility of the museum or your site. For example, the highway approach might be the responsibility of your local government. And um, signage, technology. Exactly. So it might be worth talking to them and saying, look, there's an aspect issue here. What can you do to improve after? Then the um, action plans are prioritised by a coloured traffic light system. So you can use red and they will green, uh, depending on the time scale and how urgent they are. We also recommend uh, four different code, none for um, snow car, and for minimal ongoing maintenance and ST for structural change. After consultants are very useful in that they can actually help to identify what is reasonable. In some countries like the UK, uh, it's up to what is reasonable in terms of making a change. So if you have a small organisation, it might not be reasonable to spend a lot of money on the practical change. Whereas in some countries like Dubai or in the United States, it's much more about compliance rather than what would be a reasonable adjustment. Then uh, we encourage clients to be proactive. By frequently reviewing action plans that illustrate that a museum or art gallery is proactive, service provider, and an action plan illustrates an ongoing journey to achieve inclusion. Inclusion is not something that can be achieved overnight, but this will demonstrate how you're doing that. In the UK, museums have been in lockdown since March. Some reopened on the 4th of July. Some has reopened this month or are planning next year. Face March became compulsory for all museum visitors in England since Saturday, the um, 8th of August. It's debt for people with disabilities. In Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, there are different agendas, so different requirements. Okay, obviously I'm out there and I'm doing a lot of access to that. I'd like to talk about some of the things um, I've seen in relation to COVID. Um, a lot of the things are obvious, but I think because we're going through this pandemic, we're trying to win things, we're trying to learn things as we go, we might be missing things that are right in front of us, which is completely understandable. Okay, number one is toilet bathroom. As part of hygiene, quite a lot of sites are closing off certain bathrooms. Please try and make sure that the accessible toilet is actually cut open because some sites have seen they've cut um, the closed accessible toilet, cut the standard ones open. Hand sanitizer. My hands have never been this clean before. Um, but Try and make sure that the hand, san hand sanitizers are colour contrasted against the wall. I'm seeing so many hand sanitizers which are white against the white wall and even I'm walking past them. Make sure that they are at a height suitable, not only just for wheelchair users, but also for children as well. And to be fair, 
But it's more important that the children wipe their hands because they like to go round and touch absolutely everything. Make, try and have hand sanitizers that can be a one-handed action, i.e. on the wall or sensor. If you have a bottle on a table, that's a two-handed action and it's quite difficult to do for some people. Again, reception area to provide protection between staff and visitors, we are having to put perspex screens in place. This unfortunately has caused a lot of problems for people with a hearing impairment like ourselves because they produce glare which makes it very difficult to lip read and also there's a barrier for the sound so the sound is sort of approaching going up down like that. This heightened the requirement to have an induction loop for hearing aid users but also to try and get staff, try and make sure the staff are aware that people with a hearing impairment have additional needs. One of the complicated things we have at the moment in relation to COVID is that the Equality Act or the ADA in America or Dubai University to Down Code is actually lower than the requirement of health and safety. So at the moment, a lot of places are pushing accessibility to one side because they have to follow the health and safety law. There's no rule book at the moment, but there's lots of things we need to consider. For an example, uh, we don't want people touching tactile and braille at the moment. So perhaps consider paper tactile map that will wrap around for everything. This is really important here. If you have um, tactile models or artifacts or an item that needs to be touched, etc., um, fashion museums wearing clothes, and if you need to shut these because of COVID, please do make sure that you mention these on the website because if somebody with impaired vision turns up to your museum and finds that they can't um, visit the areas which are accessible for them, that might be quite upsetting. It would be the same for someone who is deaf. I, I, like myself, I tend to use sign language and I would think nothing of going three to four hours dry to go and see a show or performance with a sign language interpreter. So for me, it's very important to know whenever a venue has decided to cancel. So I'm conscious we're going to get a few minutes before I'm at um, Temporary signage. Um, we are chopping down lots of trees at the moment. I'm seeing signs everywhere. One way system, do not go there. Facility closed, go this way. Try and remember to stick to best practice guidelines. So that you think upper and lower case. Try and use pictorial signage. Try and make sure that the good contrast to the signage as well. Black on white always work. Great thought for the blind that are trained to take their own up directly to the entrance. Someone with a visual impairment won't be able to see or understand social distancing. They wouldn't be able to direct the dog. Whereas um, someone who might have a hearing dog but deaf or someone in a wheelchair would actually be able to see social distancing and would be able to advise and control their dog accordingly. So it's important um, to be aware of what happens when someone with visual impairment comes in. Is there the one-way system that has been introduced at Change in Access Week, then a policy must be developed to facilitate disabled access. Routes must be clearly signed for non-verbal visitors who might have difficulty in asking for direction. Any changes should be detailed on your website, and people with autism in particular might find changes challenging. For example, if you have a visitor every Monday afternoon, and she's suddenly changed to only being open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, that could be um, a challenge.
Mark can create Dan challenges for deaf and hard of hearing people. Can did the clear mark that the Dan demonstrated by one of our colleagues in the pitch shop. Face shield can provide produce aesthetic glare that can hinder lip reading. Try written communication with a pen and paper or a phone app easy over Otterboard. There are plenty of others out there, so just try different options depending on, on your curtain safety. Um, another thing is for our, it's important to promote, like here in the UK, we have the Sunflower Land Yard scheme. Um, disabled people are exempt from having to wear MAC. But if you don't have a lanyard or something, there's that inclination to go up to people and ask, excuse me, I hope you don't mind, but why are you not wearing a Mac? If you have a lanyard scheme in place or any other local disability scheme, it saves a lot of questions, it saves that awkwardness. Very quickly, um, if you have an access guide for your museum, please do make sure that they have been updated to reflect the current changes in place, even if they're just temporary. Um, I will skip through this. When you have the access guides that show the COVID changes, make sure that you update them in standard